So, Mr. President, members of the Council, as uh, Mr. Darrow just said, our, our plan at this time is to uh, make what you're very uh, used to at this stage of this kind of hearing, uh, which is sort of the, the legal analysis wrap up. I understand that you are continuing uh, this so that you can take further testimony. Um, and uh, nevertheless, uh, I'm prepared to make that presentation to you and would more than welcome any questions um, that may arise on the part of the council as a result of the further testimony that you will hear on the 26th. I just inquire, does that uh, make sense to proceed in that manner, Mr. President, members of the council? So, there are typically legal standards that we are required to meet and convince you that we've met them. Section 19-73 of your zoning code requires in the beginning that the planning board provide you with an advisory opinion. I'm going to ask that you make that advisory opinion a formal part of this record because your planning board found and determined unanimously that this request meets all of the required findings and standards under state law and all your ordinances. Comprehensive planning consistency. Your planning board found, and you heard testimony from us tonight, you have a record that shows that our petition to rezone this property from open space to a sub-district in the waterfront district and we're asking you to designate it the Met Com Met Comet, sorry, but it's moved this over this way, the Met Comet Subdistrict will allow such uses as residential, business, medical, retail, cafes, art galleries, groceries, pharmacies, is consistent with specific policy statements contained in your comprehensive plan and the goals and objectives of that comprehensive plan, specifically as to the land use element. And I won't read them, I won't read the text to you, but I would like to cite to you those specific sections. Goal 1.0, that has to do to ensure that the uh, remaining vacant land or re redeveloped parcels are used for the maximum benefit to the community. You know, there's been a lot of discussion this evening about just wanting to keep an open space. And like all of us who have sat here tonight, I understand that. And that is a wonderful aspiration. But it's just that, it's an aspirational goal. I suggest to you I'll proceed when I'm allowed to, Mr. President. Please proceed, sir. Thank you. We, more than an aspirational goal, have presented you with a pathway in which 71 of those acres will remain open space. And again, importantly for me, importantly for you, importantly for our community. That is space that will be open to all of us, not just a few select people. 1.5, uh, the objective of 1.5, we meet that, that your, your planning board found that we did. 1.6, 1.7. One point six addresses the tax base, one point seven addresses the job opportunities. And I might add that there have been several questions. I know I said at the beginning, I'll just say it for the sake of completeness. 
that those information that we're providing you on those job opportunities and on that task base is not anything we generated. Your chief economic development officer generated that information. We are relying on the information produced by your experts. Also, set, uh, standards for section 19-2 of your zoning. I direct your attention specifically to that. And your planning board found unanimously that we met the requirements of all the standards of section 19.2, uh, excuse me, 19-2 a range of uses with appropriate intensity, orderly growth and development, high level of quality and design, promote the implementation of the city's comprehensive plan. Every single one, and I know I'm going to repeat something Mr. Darrow said, but it's critical to understanding the legal construct of all of this. Every single one of those commitments that you see presented to you as evidence this evening is a legal obligation. It will be backed up by the force and operation of law. It is a mandatory requirement. What makes this presentation to you different, I think, than any other development that you've seen along our waterfront are the level and nature of the commitments that are being made before we even get to that process that we talked about at the beginning of our hearing this evening. Unique. Not only does it create, not only do those mandatory legal requirements in a position which we gratefully accept, not only do they create those jobs, not only do they expand your tax base, but they create what is probably the largest public open space will create if you give us the chance to work with you and continue to work with the community what is probably the largest open public space in the history of our city. So yes, we are dedicated to that principle. So with all of that evidence in the record, we have met all of the legal standards, all of the legal requirements for our two requests for the relief. Specifically, we request that you amend the city's comprehensive plans Central East Providence generalized land use map from open space to a new subdistrict of the East Providence Waterfront Special Development District to be designated as the Nevada Common Subdistrict. <coughs> Secondly, with the support of the evidence before you, we ask that you amend the zoning map of the City of East Providence from open space to a new subdistrict of the Waterfront District to be designated as the Nevada Common Subdistrict. Been a lot of speculation, a lot of innuendo, a lot of conspiracy theories flying around the room tonight. Please make your decision on the facts and the law. If you make your decision on the facts of the law, coupled with what I know, and the Marshall family knows, is 
you be keenly aware of serving the best interests of our community. This is the opportunity to do that. We are committed to every single one of those conditions that we presented to you. And more importantly, as Mr. Darrow said a moment ago, if there are additional concerns and conditions, just tell us. Tell us what you want. We can respond to that. More importantly, we're not done. If, if we get through this first step of the process, clearly the kind of public review, professional review, that will take place under all of those more than 150 specific performance standards that will be subject to will result in further refinement and conditions that will allow us to work with you, work with our community, to build a community center that we can all be proud of. Thank you.